Hello everyone, welcome to Easy Engineering Classes. We are continuing with our preparation series for Gate Computer Science, UGC Net Computer Science and Bank IT Officer exams. So today we will be solving two questions that are based on operating system and they appeared in Gate 2017 paper. The first question is on file allocation system which states that which of the following allocation schemes can be used if no external fragmentation is allowed now if you are very clear and thorough with the concepts of file allocation you will be you will find this question very easy because it is clearly seen that linked and indexed allocation do not suffer from external fragmentation while contiguous allocation suffers so the correct answer would be d in this case because 2 and 3 do not suffer from external fragmentation but for those of you who are not very clear with the concept of external fragmentation i would like to tell you that external fragmentation occurs when uh, the total amount of memory that is present or that is free is equal to or greater than the amount of memory that is required by a process but these uh, chunks of memory are not contiguous so in this case this this memory cannot be allocated to a process all right but linked in uh, linked and indexed allocation schemes do not suffer from these uh, this drawback of external fragmentation because in linked alloc allocation scheme each file is a linked list of disk blocks which is not contiguous and these disk blocks can be scattered anywhere so the first block that is allocated to a file is linked to the next block of the file and the next block is linked to the third block and so on whereas in index allocation a special block in memory acts as an index block and it contains the pointer to all the blocks occurred occupied by a file so the ith entry in the block corresponds to the ith uh, block of the file all right so these are the basic definitions of uh, the three allocation schemes and external fragmentation in contiguous you know all the blocks of a file will be allocated continuously that means the first block would be allocated uh, before the second block comes and after the second block immediately the third block would be allocated or the entire process would be given a single chunk so that is contiguous allocation so uh, quickly i'll write these definitions what i just told and then uh, continue with the remaining video Okay, so as I have written here, these are the definitions of external fragmentation, linked allocation and indexed allocation and contiguous, you know, the entire process is given a single chunk. So the answer of this question would be 2 and 3. That means linked and index will not suffer from external fragmentation. Now coming to the second question, the question states that in a two level cache, the access times of L1 cache and L2 cache are 1 and 8 clock cycles respectively. The miss penalty from L2 to main memory is 18 clock cycles and the miss rate of L1 cache is twice that of L2. The average memory access time of this cache is 2 cycles. The miss rates of L1 and L2 are. Now, if you are clear with the concepts of two level cache or hierarchical cache or memory organization then this is a very simple question in which the direct formula can be used which is the L1 miss rate or, or starting with the hit rate first L1 hit rate multiplied by time to access L1 plus L1 miss rate multiplied by time to access L1 plus L2 hit rate into to access L2 plus L2 miss rate multiplied by 
time to access L2 plus time to access memory. And if this formula seems very confusing to you, so you must first understand the logic of two-level cache. I'll explain you it in very short version. Actually, in two-level cache, what happens is there are two caches before we before the memory is accessed. So whenever we need to access a particular value, we'll first check in first cache that is L1 in this case. If it is not found, then we'll it will be checked whether it is present. The value to be searched is present in L2 or not. If in it is not found in L2 as well, then the memory is accessed. So there are three possible cases. Initially, we go to L2. Initially, we go to L1. There are two options here. L1 hit is possible or L1 miss is possible. L1 hit means that means you have found the word in cache L1. So the time required to access the memory would be at L1 access time. All right. The time that would be required to access L1 will be the only time required in this case. But in case there is miss L1 miss, then what how much time would be required? The time that will be required to access L2. All right. Once there uh, the word or the value is not found in L1, we will go to L2. Go to L2. Now when we go to L2. Again, same thing, same two things can happen. Either there can be an L2 hit. So the total time that would be required is L1 access time plus L2 access time. Because if we are coming to L2 after L1, then we must have accessed L1. And then only we would have come to know that the value is not present in L1. And then we would have searched L2. So in case of L2 hit also, we would the time required would be L1 access time plus L2 access time. Alright. And if there is a L2 miss, then in that case, the time required would be the time for L1 to uh, the time to access L1 time to access L2 and then later on the time to access the memory as well. Alright, so this is what we have written in the formula. Initially, if L1 hit rate, the rate at which the value can be found in L1 is given by L1 hit rate and we assume it to be twice of M. Okay, uh, since it is given here that the uh, the miss rate of L1 cache is twice that of L2. So initially we assume that the, I'll write it down here separately for you. If we assume that the hit rate of L2 is M or we can also write the miss, since the miss rate is given to be miss rate of L1 is given to be twice that of L2. So miss rate of L2, we assume it to be M. So its corresponding hit rate would be 1 minus M. All right. Then if we write for L1, miss rate of L1 is assumed to be twice of L2. So 2M and the corresponding hit rate would be 1 minus 2m. Alright. Now if we substitute these value here. If we substitute these value here. Initially L1 hit rate. L1 hit rate is assumed to be 1 minus 2m. Then time to access L1. So what is the probability by which we will find a hit in L1 multiplied by the time to access L1. If it is found in L1 then fine. Else. L1 miss rate, the probability or the rate at which a miss occurs while accessing L1, this value would be multiplied by the time to access L1 because even when L1 has a miss or we suffer a miss at L1, we must have accessed L1. Then only we would have known that there is a miss. So time to access L1 
is multiplied with with l1 miss rate and then we'll add the time to access l2 l2 hit rate again the same thing is happening l2 hit rate multiplied by time to access l2 plus l2 miss rate and this would be multiplied by time to access l2 plus the mem uh, time to access memory so uh, you only have to understand that initially we access l1 there is a certain probability that the, the hit will get the value in l1 so that is the hit rate or the probability hit probability and the time required to access l1 if not found in l1 we go to l2 if not found in l2 we go to the final memory all right so putting these values our formula was l1 miss rate so l1 miss rate was 1 minus 2m multiplied by 1 sorry l1 hit rate multiplied by time to access l1 this was uh, l1 hit rate multiplied by time to access l1 is given to be 1 in the question plus l1 miss rate now l1 miss rate is twice of m multiplied by time to access l1 time to access l1 is again given 1 plus hit rate of l2 l2 hit rate is 1 minus m multiplied by the time to access l2 which is 8 plus m into 8 plus 18 i'll write down the formula again here so that it gets a little convenient for you the formula that i'm using is l1 hit rate multiplied by l1 access time plus l1 miss rate multiplied by l1 access time plus l2 hit rate multiplied by l2 access time plus l2 miss rate multiplied by l2 access time plus the time to access memory memory access time all right so uh, you can correspondingly check that these are the values that i have substituted here now quickly solving this question it comes out to be 1 minus 2m plus 2m multiplied by 1 plus 8 minus 8m plus 26m all right if you solve this it would come out to be 1 minus 2m plus 2m into 9 minus 18m and uh, this value is 36m square plus 16m plus 1 now it is given to you in the question that the average memory access time of this cache is two cycles and you have to find the miss rates of l1 and l2 so average access time this is the formula for average access time that we are given or that we know and this is given to be 2 so solving this equation for 2 you will get the value of m equal to 0 0.5 and so on or you can approximate it to be 0 0.56 so this is m which is the miss rate of l2 and the miss rate of l1 was assumed to be 2m so this value is 2 into 0 0.56 which is 0 0.111 so the miss rate of l1 is 0 0.111 and the miss rate of l2 is equal to 0 0.56 so our correspondingly our answer would be 0.111 and 0.56 i hope this formula is not very confusing to you you can try to understand how a two level cache works and then you can recheck whether the formula written here is actually what i have explained you or not you'll find out that this is how the two level cache or a hierarchical cache will be able to find the average memory access time
so that's all for today's lecture thank you for watching the video stay tuned to easy engineering classes for more lectures on gate ugc net and bank it officer preparation series thank you